Hi everyone. In this session we're going to be having a look at archiving. Now I have a clip library where I have three reels. In the first reel I have got a slate, the second reel I've got some sources that I've been working with, and the third reel is the final composited result. Now once the project has been delivered to the client, what I'd like to do is perhaps back all this media up. So if I need to revisit it again, I can restore it on the system with no problems. In order for me to go ahead and create the archive, inside the libraries you have got an archiving operation. So when I select archive, it brings up the menu. In the archive menu, I want to archive some media and the device I'm going to be using is a file-based archive. Firstly, when creating the archive, we need to choose where the archive is going to go. So going down to the text box, we can enter into the browser and navigate to where the directory is as well as choose the name for this archive. So in this case the archive is going to be called My Media. With this defined we now need to go ahead and create the archive before we put the media inside. So this is when you would choose the formatting operation. Now at this point we give the archive a name so once again I'm going to call it My Media and you can add a comment as a description if necessary. Now down over here you have capacity. Now capacity doesn't refer to the amount of data that you have in your project, it refers to the size of the archive. So for example, you can see the capacity says one gigabyte. Now the way this works is if I had a project that let's say had five gigabytes worth of data, even if I set the capacity to be one gigabyte, the system will then create five one gigabyte files. So the whole point of this capacity is actually setting the maximum size of the archive file before it creates another one and starts filling that one up. What I usually recommend to people is to either use one gigabyte file segments or possibly going to four gigabyte file segments. The reason for this is if you imagine four gigabytes can be backed up to a DVD as an extra added protection. So if we go with a four gigabyte archive, I then hit format this then creates the archive and my archive is now open. Having a look over here to the top left, you will see that we are looking into the archive. It is labeled My Media and currently there is nothing inside. In order for me to archive my media into this archive, we just switch it from archive back to clip library. Now inside here what you can do is you can either select the entire clip library or you can select individual reels or you can select individual clips. So you have full flexibility as to what you want to add into the archive. Now before we go ahead and add material, what you can also do is a size estimation. So all the material we have, we click size estimate and it will tell me exactly how much data I really have. Now why this is important is even though we specified that the archive segments will be one gigabytes, once the archive is closed and finished, it will only be the size of the media that we've put in. So if I've only put in 100 megabytes into my archive file, it will only be 100 megabytes. It won't be bloated up to one gigabyte. In this case, let's just take the slate and the sources to start. So if I come here, I can choose to go ahead and archive the media. But you also have another option here called archive and close. Now the reason why you have two options is if I just click archive, the system will archive the media but leave the archive open so that I can go ahead and add more media in in the current session. If I've got my clips selected and this is all I want to put into the archive, I can just hit archive and close. It will write the media into the archive and then write the final bits of header so that it knows what the file is. So if I hit archive and close, the system then says, do you want to confirm? I confirm this and the frames are then written directly into the archive. The archive is now done and it's closed. So what do we get? Well with a media based archive if I go into the browser I get two files. A my media file which is only a very small file it's 200 kilobits and then a my media file underscore one dot seg. This dot seg file is the actual archive holding my data and as I said it's only 61 megabytes in size. When opening an archive what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have the small kilobit file as well as the segment or multiple segment files all in one directory in order for the archive to open successfully. 
The file you choose is the small file to open the archive. When we select the file, it's then selected and I hit open. Inside the archive, you can see we have something called a backup set. So it gives the date and the time in which the media was archived. And if I open this up, you can see it says slate and inside there is my text slate. And then I've got my real sources. One thing to point out is that this is not viewing the entire clip. Smoke or Flame have simply taken the first frame and the last frame of every clip and created a proxy. So you can at least scrub through and see exactly what that media was at the very beginning and towards the very end. So those files that we've created in the browser can then be maybe put onto a server, copied onto an LTO drive, or even copied to a DVD. If I wanted to add more media to this archive, because I've forgotten to add my final result, what we can do is with the archive still open, we can switch from the archive mode back to the clip library. I can then select my real final and also add that into the archive. The one thing that now happens is if we have a look at the archive mode, we now have got two backup sets. The first backup set had the slate and the sources and the second backup set now has the final. This is how you can append to the archive and you can keep adding and adding media. The one thing that you cannot do with an archive is once you've added media in or appended media into the archive, you cannot delete it out. So it's only a one way trip into the archive. Now, once this is done, we can then close the archive and those files can then be backed up and saved elsewhere. The one thing is that this media archive is just archiving the footage as well as timelines. So if there's any effects in the timelines, all those things will be saved, including batch effects or any soft effects you may have. However, if you have been working in certain modules within the application, let's say the color corrector or the keyer, and you've actually been saving the setup files or the metadata files that contain the settings to do a color correction or a key, those will not get backed up in the media archive. So if I'm going to be archiving using this technique, I must archive the media as you've just seen, but I also need to go ahead and create a setups archive. And the setups archive is just a small compressed file containing all the setup files that I've been working with and saving that into a compressed media. So firstly, I want to go ahead and navigate to wherever my media archive is so we can keep everything together. And I'm going to create a setups file and we'll call this, uh, let's say, my projects setups. And as you can see, .tar is the extension. So when I hit enter, that is the file that it's going to go ahead and create. So if we now hit archive and confirm, it then creates the archive and you get the last message that it has been successfully archived. So in hindsight, if you wanted to restore a media archive and a setups archive, you would first need to create a project. Then you would restore the media archive into that project. And then finally, you would restore the setups into that archive. So essentially, you're returning all the media that you had, as well as all the settings files to recreate what you had in the past. Now, this is basically archiving in small individual bits. So you'll notice that I archived media from one library. I would then switch to another library, archive it. So it's quite a manual process. And this allows you to be very picky and very concise as to what you want to archive. Another way of doing an archive would be a project archive. And the project archive will take everything. It will take the media, it will take the setups, it will take the configuration files. The whole lot will be put into an archived file. So to do this, once again, you follow a similar process. Let's go back into the archive menu this time. And instead of archiving setups, I'm going to switch back to clips. Same thing as before, we need to create the archive before we put anything into it. So in this case, I'm going to go into the tab over here. And this time, I'm going to call this a project archive. So I'm just giving it a name. And we'll call this my project archive, like so. In here, we format the archive. And once again, we would go ahead and actually specify what exactly the size of the archive segments are going to be. So in this case, I want to work with one gigabyte segments. And uh, if it got bigger than one gigabyte, it would then just create 
more files. So essentially it will span the files over one gigabyte segments. Once I hit format, we get back to exactly the same position as we were before. The archive is currently empty. What we now do is switch back to the clip library. Now down over here we have got selection. So this is what we did the first time is we were picking selections and putting them into an archive. This time if I expand the option up I can choose to archive all the project libraries. So if I had more than one library I can archive them all in one go. If I wanted to archive the project with the libraries as well as any libraries I might be linked into we could archive all that media. We could archive the whole project which is what we're going to do or the other option is archive the whole project plus any shared or networked libraries. Now we're going to go with the project archive because this is the most common. Now at this point I'm going to do a size estimate and what the size estimate will do is it will essentially weigh up the size of all the media in all the different libraries, all the setups and all the configuration files and it gives me a final tally of exactly how big this whole project is going to be. The one thing about project archiving that you need to be aware of is you've got to watch your housekeeping. So if you don't want to archive maybe little bits of pieces of media that you've been working with or settings, you may want to clean the project up first before doing a project based archive. However, once the archive is ready to go, you can hit archive or archive and close. This will then create the archive. It will then put all the video into the archive as well as all my data. Once it's completed, it brings you back to this menu. So let's go ahead and open the project archive and have a look at it. So you can see it looks exactly the same as the media archive, but this time if I select the project archive and open it, you will see it says backup set. If we expand the backup set, you now see it says project and it's project A. Inside there, I've got the project setups. I've also got an edit desk library or desktop as well as the clip libraries with their relevant reels. When it comes to restoring a project archive, you just need to ensure that you do not have a project on your system with the same project name. All you need to do is open up any project on your system and hit restore project. It will recreate the project and then install the configuration files, the media and the setups. This is the perfect mirror image of your previous project. It will take into account all the different resolutions and all of your settings. Once you're happy with it and you've restored it, you can then exit the archiving tool and just open up the project.